Season 2, Episode 5. Welcome to the Muslim Lifehackers Podcast, the weekly podcast providing you with the knowledge, tools, and connections to help you get ahead in life. And now for your hosts, Mifra Maruf and Maheen Malik. Assalamu alaikum Muslim Lifehackers. This is Maheen Malik here with another episode of the Muslim Lifehackers podcast. Hope you're doing well and are ready for another fantastic interview. Today we've got Peter Gould on our show. Peter is a designer who helps brands all around the world to illuminate, enrich and inspire inshallah. He has worked with some awesome clients such as Sony, Etihad Airways, Vodafone, the Australian government, the Royal House of Saudi Arabia, and the list just goes on and on, mashallah. Peter currently runs a design studio called Creative Cubed and is working on some awesome new apps as well as a new creative platform that has recently been launched. Now we get into this new platform that he's launched in the interview, so be sure to stay tuned. Mifra and I pick his brain on his business process, how he goes about organizing what he does, along with his vision on connecting people around the Ummah, how to turn ideas into reality and much, much more. You know, this episode has to be one of my favorites that we've done so far. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Assalamu alaikum Muslim Life Hackers. This is Maheen and Mifra here bringing you another exciting interview. And today we've got the one and only Peter Gould. So Peter, you've been described as the go-to designer for many Islamic companies and non-Islamic companies. And basically, while we were Googling you up and stalking you, we found this quote from the ABC, sorry, not the ABC. And it says, Peter has become the go-to designer for many Islamic companies. He's amongst those young uh, urban global Muslims leading the emergence of the new cool Muslim. Um, so this is pretty interesting and yeah. uh, a nice thing to be said about you. So, who is Peter? We want to know. Could you tell us a bit about yeah, yourself? Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, firstly, and thank you so much for having me. Um, it's really cool to um, be a part of the show, and I really love what you guys are doing. So, thank you very much for having me, and I'm sure you have some really amazing listeners too. So, um, it's great to be in touch with everyone listening. So, alhamdulillah, yeah, well, that's that's a big fancy quote that you found. <laughs> I yes, mean, um, we like them fancy. Yeah, alhamdulillah. I mean, look, really, there's, there's been an incredibly, um, incredibly beautiful journey the last 10 years with a lot of blessings and a lot of projects, a lot of really amazing people and um, brands and products and experiences that, you know, I've been able to work with and help sort of develop and grow and launch. So, yeah, it's, it's really led to a whole um, beautiful, amazing collection of um, experiences and, and uh, opportunities. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, let me know where you want me to start. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's so, a lot to share. Well, we'll dive right into it. It's really, it's really interesting to like hear that, you know, it's what experiences that have really touched you and things like that. So, when we did research you and we kind of looked you up, it's like you've been pretty much everywhere, all around the world, yeah. different projects different like people that you've been involved with and things like that and a lot of like design professionals and things like that you've, that you've been in touch with and things like that could you tell us a bit more about like the projects that you're involved with and the communities that you're involved with sure yeah sure so i mean day to day uh i'm running a branding and design studio and uh, i have a little team here in um just by the beach here in sydney a little um creative studio and we work on lots of really cool and interesting projects mm -hmm. Um, and we're very fortunate in that we have a really uh, diverse set of clients and briefs that come to us, mm -hmm. and and they really range from um, you know from sort of local government work, which is sort of you know not the most exciting stuff, but definitely you know good um, good basic design work. Could right you through. just adjust the Australian flag for us a little bit, or uh, not I stuff like that? I have redesigned the Australian flag. I don't think. Oh, that, really? Well, uh, just as just as a fun project. Okay. Um, oh, cool. It hasn't been accepted by anyone. <laughs> But you know, that's surprising, working project. Yeah, that's one of my lifelong goals <laughs> to work on. It. But the um, yeah, but but I mean, some of the more interesting and exciting projects come out of places like uh, you know the Emirates or Saudi or you know I, I lived in California for a little while and and still um, you know sort of in touch with a lot of the the people and organisations there that some interesting work comes from. Um, I also love to try and work on my own sort of internal ideas and, and create. I've worked on creating a few startups from apps and games, and more recently a new platform that I've helped launch. So always trying to keep active and busy and um, 
not just busy for busy's sake, but productive. And you know, you guys would know all about life hacking. You want to, you know, try and um, use your time for something beneficial yeah. that keeps inspiring you to keep, you know, getting better and better, and also others. You know, mm. and, and, and when people. You know, I'm, I'm very um, humble and blessed that lots of people write to me or send me questions or send me messages saying, oh, I like, I like this thing that you did and then that inspired me to do that and, and cool. so on. So that keeps me going as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so like with, um, with the initiatives that you're doing in your side projects, um, would, you, would you be able to tell us a bit about like the latest ones that you're working on right now? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's always a few things in the works, and yeah. uh, one of the more recent ones that I'm really excited about, I think has a lot of potential, it's called Creative Uma. Okay. And creativeuma.com launched uh, in December, we launched it in Dubai, and it's got basically, uh, there's a lot of parts to it, but, but in a nutshell, it's about connecting people around the Ummah um, who, and, and, and empowering them with creative skills. Um, so the vision is this, so imagine in 10 years time from now there's some kid in Arche or some remote place with you know not a lot of act not you know not living with um, necessarily you know big university or a lot of money or a lot of resources around them but they're able to log into creativewoman.com and for free or very affordably access and directly work under the teachings of some of the great greatest Muslim artists and creatives photographers you know film makers fashion designers all in one spot and learn from them and meet other classmates from around the world and then um, do collaborative projects together with those people that solve some of the Ummah's big problems. Yeah. And we have a lot of problems. <laughs> you know, you don't need yeah, me to tell you that. So, yeah. so I'm, I really want to use creative thinking and design thinking to solve some of those problems, you know. Um, the, you know, the Ummah's crying out. And we've, we've got so much talent, mashallah. There's so many amazing people that I've yeah. met and seen over the last decade from Indonesia to, you know, Istanbul to... You know, California to, um, you know, you name it. There's this yeah. amazing, um, you know, lots of young people energized and they're, you know, they they're, they um, they have their deen and they want to empower themselves, you know, with their faith. So the whole idea of Creative Woman is, is, is using all of those things together. Mm -hmm. And I think it could be really cool. So what, um, what, in, what inspired you to actually do something with regards to, like, the creative field, the art field? I mean, mm -hmm. why couldn't you get into, like, politics or something? Peter Gould <laughs> politics? Oh, my gosh. That would be a disaster. Peter Gould politics. I stay <laughs> well away. Prime Minister. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure even the current Prime Minister would do a much better job. Um, I, yeah, look, um... It, it's just, you know, be part, part of my story, you know, I guess yeah. since I was young, it's just, you know, I've always been fascinated by it. It's just like Allah puts every, in every, like, year, there's enough people born around the planet, Allah makes enough of them have an innate desire to do, to have a talent in one particular area, mm -hmm. that there's just enough to go around. Like, I had this thought, imagine one year Allah designed all the kids in, like, 2018 born really really want to be accountants like every kid around the planet right strange thought yeah, yeah it's strange thought. <laughs> and just but I mean of course that would be a disaster but there's always you know like this incredible right, spread exactly people right have a natural them. inclination for different talents yeah. right and and I see that with my own kids you know they're just born you have very little to do with that initially there's, yeah. there's a range of nature and nature. anyway go, came back to the yes. question so Science. my particular um sort of love always was drawing and creating things and dabbling on computers and, and technology and um, combining those things going to high school and then you know rolling a design degree and doing design and at the same time starting a, my first business when I was about 20 and just I had no idea what I was doing but I started something up it was around the whole dot-com era and yeah, yeah before yeah. I knew I was doing you know some web projects and um, the first brief we got was a really impressive and, and very scary um, website project um, for a large well-known company we, we somehow landed at my partner and I and I realized you know I have no idea what I'm doing but, <laughs> but we learned cool. we, but we learned and it was a great way to just um, get the business up and going and, and just really learn hands-on and yeah. working with clients and deadlines and projects and, yeah. and technology and and so yeah really um, I followed that over the you know the last decade I started traveling um, I, around that time I was interested in Islam became Muslim and started traveling to lots of the East and trying to learn Arabic and uh, I, f I found this whole beauty in in places like um, Morocco and Syria um, Jerusalem Turkey and I ended up you know staying in a few of those places for a little while and, and going back as much as I could yeah and just trying to absorb all of those and it made me feel like you know subhanallah that I'm 
I have, and what does that mean as an Australian Muslim creative graphic designer, yeah. you know? And so I, you know, I was trying to connect that tradition and that legacy with, you know, contemporary uh, elements. Mm. So continue that journey of, you know, that artistic tradition that Muslims have, but mm. in a very contemporary graphic design Fresh way. way. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. And it's really interesting to know that what the influences have been behind your projects and seeing them all combine to what you're doing right now. And I just want to shake things up a bit. And first of all, I want to know why you launched Creative Woman in Dubai, is it? Right. Yes. And uh-huh. secondly, <laughs> it was just an idea that you started with. Like, mm-hmm. how yeah. did you take this idea? Like, we all have ideas. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. we have an idea, like, we want to, I don't know, take, take over the, the world. world. Yeah, take over the world. Yep. And, um, yep. But it just stays as an idea. Yeah. Like, how yeah. did you take that yeah. and make the leap to yeah. turn into a to reality? reality. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, this is the this is the great question. I mean, think about it. Like every single thing around us, man made, like this coffee cup, this spoon, you know, this uh, recorder. It's um, it's it's just an idea. Act on, acted upon. Mm, every single thing, every created thing, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and and every single thing around us has gone through that that process of someone going, oh, you know, it would be really cool if we have. Uh, a spoon that looks like this, you know, that yeah. would be really helpful at some point. Yeah. And then it gets iterated upon and changed and changed and developed. And you know, actually, this is really probably showing off, but I actually designed the logo on the back of this spoon. I just realized, no way. yeah, yeah. No <laughs> this way. was about 12 years ago. One of my first design jobs for was for a big um, cutlery company, awesome. and and it's it's I know it's showing off, but it's really good when I'm with clients because I can say, oh, so you want to see some of my work? Um, well, that's oh, so that, that fork you're shop. using. No, because <laughs> they just pick up the fork. And, oh wow! What a, uh, anyway. For our listeners, we're actually <laughs> sitting in uh, a cafe just by the by the ocean by the, sea. yeah by the beach side where Peter's office is and we should take a photo of this food and run our show notes <laughs> yeah well they you know it was uh, it was a, that was part of that period of just really um, not really knowing what I was doing but just trying things out and some you know it's just a lot opening a lot of doors and you know like quite incredible so so getting back to your question like and, and with creative Uma, um it look it comes about one you know a lot of things come about organically that I mean, you can't not do it. Like, you just feel like I really have to do this thing it's in me. You know, I just feel driven. And so I had um, someone that I became um, good friends with and it's someone that's really like a mentor to me uh, named Khadija. She's based in California. And some years ago, um, we were talking about there's a real lack of creative events and projects um, and, and mentors and, uh, in, in the Ummah, you know, we were doing stuff online, we couldn't, basically there, there wasn't like what there is now where there's all these photography workshops and artistic things and graffiti workshops, so we came up with this idea for a series of events and we mm. called it Creativity in the Spiritual Path, Yeah. Um, and alhamdulillah we had uh, I think seven of those events. I'm trying to think of the acronym for that, anyway, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so we'll just call it CSP, right, CSP, and, and we, um, we did those in... Um, Toronto, San Francisco, um, Kuala Lumpur, Sydney and Melbourne and it was a really amazing way to connect all these creatives. So I had that thing going on for a while um, and then at the same time I was doing like branding workshops and teaching design a lot of people asking about things and so so Creative Home is really the, 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 um, the fusion of those two things. So it's teaching and sharing skills and knowledge yeah. but bringing in that whole that aspect of connection and working together using your creative talents um, collaboratively for, for great causes and combining um, combining ideas to solve um, you know problems that need to be solved. So cre- Creative Home is really just at like it's really at the very, very first level. Um, it probably needs ten years to get to where I would like it to be or yeah. more. Um, but inshallah, if we can have a million people logging on every day, working on really cool projects, solving issues, um, you know, or if there's some there's some big company in Saudi that's looking for a really brilliant illustrator, you know, in Indonesia, they can find them quickly and easily, and vice versa. If there's some um, fashion, you know, um, sort of uh, fashion designer or fashion business owner looking for some. Um, you know, designer in um, California, or, or if there's someone they want to learn from someone in Indonesia, vice versa. Yeah. There's like make all these connect. connections happen you, because there's all these pockets, but they're not connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's amazing. It's, it's it's really cool to hear that. You know, it was fusion. It was kind of like organic, but then there was also like this kind of like burning need that you wanted to mm. you know yeah. put out in the world. Yeah, yeah. And you just kind of took that step. 
Okay. That's it. It's like I was, I was in, I'm doing a, a, one of my startups courses at the moment, and the guy who started, um, one of the co-founders of Facebook, said the best reason to start a startup is you can't not do it. Like mm. you have to yeah, do it. Yeah, it's yeah, not just like do diary so today. I want to make a startup. Yeah, it's or like exactly, or it's like I go to you know some business school and now I'm going to start a business, or I'm going to um, you know I want to be rich and famous, or I want to like you know be my own boss. Th- those are like you know fine, but. With Creative Home, I just felt like it's the culmination of ten years of work and thinking, and I have to I have to do this thing. Yeah. So, alhamdulillah. So um, yeah, check it out. There's still lots of stuff to be done. Um, but anyone listening, we're also looking for people to do courses, like actually design their own course and teach. So okay. if you have some, so definitely you two. I'm expecting a really good course from you two. <laughs> yeah, um, we've been how to, how to, Yeah, how to create an awesome podcast series. You know, how to inspire people. Um, you know, like put just build a course, put it on Creative Home. And let people benefit yeah. from that knowledge, mm-hmm. you know, and get paid as, at the same time. So. Yeah, definitely. So, 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 like, with with regards to like going back to your project, Creative Um Life, if we were to get into the nitty gritty yeah. about like how you mm-hmm. managed to make it happen, yeah. what about things like um, how did you go about with things like finding the right people, finding yeah. like the funding to actually make it happen? Because obviously, yeah. it's a mm-hmm. platform with like yeah. um, good technologies and stuff in place. So, yeah. Um, what went behind actually getting that to happen? Yeah, yeah. SubhanAllah. Mm. Uh, you know, like, a really a huge amount of work. Um, uh, you know, that's why the passion is the number one, the most important thing. Mm. You know, if, you're, if your motivation is like, um, oh, I, this is a great business idea, it's going to make me a lot of money, it's like, it might, but, you, you know, if you don't have that burning passion to, to keep doing it, if, you know, at, like, all hours of the night, you know, if you, you know, there's deadlines and things that really push you to do it, if you, if you do it out of love. So we're kind of, um, so you know more or less where, what, what inspired it, but in terms of the, the process of actually going through it, so the working, the working sort of title for it was actually the Peter Gould Design School. Um, that was sort of the whole idea around it, because I was going to be teaching design and branding. But then, you know, bringing a lot of this creativity and the spiritual path thinking from this event, that we, event series, we had one in Sydney. I was like, you know, um, and speaking, you know, with other creative friends, I was like, you know, this is, um, this is a good idea to put them all together. So, so I wrote, uh, I did like a few planning things on a lean canvas. I, ma- I kind of mapped it all out, what it would like. I did some yeah. research. I, you know, commissioned some online research. I did, you know, even through my own um, Facebook groups to some... Um, you know some polls and things like that reached out to a lot of different people particularly Indonesia really focusing on because there's 277 million Muslims there that's like a big user base for us Um, so there's so many parts to it Um, so you know got to be hard to organize manage sort of have a plan and then eventually, you know, identifying the right people that will come on as like co-founders with you. So there's plenty of people humbly in my network that are good advisors and good people that would. But to find people that are really like dedicated and say yes, I will take this, you know, mission on with you. Um, you know, I just, you know, I humbly was blessed to find the right people. Um, Ruben, uh, brother Ruben, and Irfan, who's in Malaysia. And uh, yeah, you know, Allah sends people your way as well. I think I believe that. That's so true. Like I remember, um, I don't know if it was something that someone said or I read, but it's always that whenever, whenever you take that path and whenever you do something for the sake of Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala always sends you the people, the resources yeah. to just make it happen. It's just yeah. about us taking that first step yeah. and just yeah. starting it. Yeah, that's it. And keep yeah. going, keep walking, and keep being keep re- persistent in it. That's right. That's right. And keep refining, refining, and taking advice. You know, with this. Um, you know, but, but you know, staying true to what you know this thing can be, and really like keep that that vision. It's like there's that distant mountain. You know, like when you guys have your logo, there's that distant, there's that there's big mountain. mountain. Yeah. So that's the mountain. Now you don't know the path to get to the mountain because it's too far away, but you can see the mountain, and you just that's keep true. walking. You sort of, and as you come across different bridges and valleys and whatever you go through, mm-hmm. it, but you, but you know that that you're going to that place. Um, but then the mechanics of this building this thing, so um, we decided to do a like a crowdfunding campaign. Um, okay, yeah, the one uh, on the launch, launch, well, launch good. panel. Yeah, 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 definitely. And launch good is awesome, by the way. And mashallah, I'm good friends with the founder, and I really that's a great, great tool. And a lot of people are using it now. Young entrepreneurs and um, you know creative people are starting to use that a lot more. 
So yeah, we raised um, a good amount of money on that. That sort of um, basically got us going. Um, we had a sort of plan in place to build the platform. We got. We wanted to just get it like lean, lean startup methodology. Just get it out there, get a live working version for people to check out, and just show a working concept. Mm. It's very important to have a working live concept to show people, not just like theoretically, you know, because you know investors see pitches every day, but like it's theoretical. They want the working, real proof of concept. Mm. So our investors are really actually in this stage are actually users and um, the 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 people producing content for us. You know that we want them to really invest in the idea and the, the platform. And yeah, we built it. We rolled it out. We did the the, the launch of the first version in um, Dubai late last year as part of the World Islamic Economic Forum, which is cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they helped us and they hosted us and gave us the venue and stuff like that. Cool. Um, and yeah, Bismillah. So but now we're actually at a stage where we, we're going to pivot a little bit. Like we need to refine the idea. There's a lot of work on the platform that needs to be done. Yeah. But um, and we want great content. Yeah, just awesome. That's cool. yeah, that sounds really cool. It seems like you know the people that came about with the project are kind of like. You knew them and kind of had to look for those who were, really had the same burning desire that you had. And yeah. It seems to me that what kind of started creating Umar was something that was keeping you up at night. Is that true? Yeah, m- more or less. I mean, apart from my crying um, baby, you know, yeah. like it was like... <laughs> On the side. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um, very much. I mean, that was a, it's a real concern to me that we have all this amazing talent that, you know, like alhamdulillah, I've seen firsthand and met all these pockets of people in, mm. in KO or in wherever it might be in Sydney, you know, or Melbourne, and it's like, okay, what are we doing with all that talent? I mean, yeah, sure, everyone's, you know, making great livelihoods or going getting jobs or maybe starting businesses, great, but like, how cool and amazing would it be if we could get some of those people working together? And this is the, inshallah, the platform that makes it happen. Where, so the first, we, I was able to get support um, through Al Jazeera as well, and they sponsored the first community challenge, which is basically where... Um, use your creative skills to, you know, answer a very simple brief, which is what's what's an issue important to you, and, and express that issue through mm-hmm. any kind of communication. And they've agreed to fly the winner out to Al Jazeera in Qatar and present their work. So having a good supporter early on helps the brand a lot. Mm-hmm. So to look for that good support. Yeah, now, it, it's it's such a big project, and even with Muslim Life, I think it's like it's a, it's a pretty big project, and we've had challenges, and we've had a lot of fears and nervousness, and backing away and coming forward. Yeah. So what are the challenges? What are the fears? Did you feel nervous? Yeah, before what you was, launched it out there. Yeah, yeah totally. I mean, it's it's such an ambitious, um, it's such an ambitious, bold thing. It's like it, it, it's almost like. It's. Just, I mean, because I help, help work with a lot of different brands and I help people launch and develop their brands. Often, people make the mistake of of thinking that the the, des- the end goal and the destination is is finally building and launching and getting the product out there. And it's like, ah, oh, breathe that. Yeah, I finally did it. I, you know, after a year of work, I've got this product out. It's out. It's like, no, no, no. That's just the start. Like, yeah. once you built it and launched it, now, that, it's, that, now it's day one begins. And and that's. You know, I almost fell into that trap with Creative Woman because yeah. it's collectively, you know, thousands of hours of work, lots of yeah. people, different places, so many people, and then you go and launch, and you're like, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, to be honest, over December, I took it a little bit easy just to, you know, just to kind of regroup and refresh and then review the kind of feedback. And, you know, humble, we've had, I think, like 600 users, registrations, a lot of people starting to take That's courses. Great. Yeah. It's cool without any real... We've only really promoted it through uh, friends on social media. Yeah. And, you know, some of them have you know millions of followers. You know, mm. I've, I've got a good partnership with Hadith of the day, so they've got like 10 million followers. So when they re-share you and you get you know 100,000 likes and 50,000 shares, that helps a lot. You know, that doesn't yeah. doesn't yeah, cost. Yeah, you'd, you'd hope it would help, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but that's the power of a connected ummah, right? Mm. That that's the power. That's you don't true. you don't need to go and like have billboards and big fancy mm. campaigns and stuff. It's not about that. It's they see connecting. the value in it and you're connecting people. So. Yeah, it seems to be coming back to a vision of connecting and it just seems to be like being brought up again and again even throughout the process of building creative more. Right, mm. that's awesome. it. That's it. And, and, it's, and, I, and I realize that um, I need to step away from it as an individual and approach it more as um, much something much bigger. That's why the, the whole idea of you know, Peter Gould Design School just was too limiting and too you know self-focused. Like wasn't as, enough. it wouldn't, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be successful. It, 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 you know, that's um, it's so much more when you find the right people and partnerships. Yeah, I, I loved hearing that. That's, it sounds so cool. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, inspiring. And one thing that I really want to get into, and uh, me and Mitchell were discussing this all. We all have the same twenty-four hours in a day, mm-hmm. but. You've got you know, your design studio upstairs and you're launching all these, all these cool side projects. 
and now this creative Omar, which is like connecting like potentially millions of Muslims around the world. Mm-hmm. Not to mention you've also got a growing family and two kids as well. Yeah, three. Oh, three. <laughs> Stats are wrong. <laughs> That's all right. Three kids. Google yeah. was wrong. No. Google was wrong. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but how, how do you do it? Like, it seems like you're superhuman. How do you juggle all these projects and continually stay motivated and work through setbacks? Alhamdulillah. It's um, one, always, whatever state you're in, be whatever your condition is, be in a state of shukr and, and gratitude, okay. right? So whatever you're at. And I wrote a thing a few years ago, like I do a lot of goal setting and planning and actively try and manage those and track those with metrics and so on. Um, is like, whatever, how, and I wrote this thing, however successful or popular my artwork is or isn't, um, I want to remain grateful and humble for that. And mm. I've tried to keep that. And alhamdulillah, like a lot of blessings keep coming. And I feel like as long as I keep trying to maintain that level of gratitude for yeah. those things, then, then you, you know, that door is still open, inshallah. Yeah. So that's that's the most important thing, um, but stay. I mean, this this the motivation is like I see um, the need for all these things, and I see the potential for them, and it excites me about being, you know, inshallah, one of those people that help really, you know, empower the ummah and, and, and empower individuals, and and I see that organically through different things I'm doing. But this is one of the ways to do that. Um, but being really organized, having good systems, like I use. You know, I mean, you can, there's so many different tools, but I personally use like Trello a lot, and yeah, I have like <laughs> thousands of Evernote. They're all tagged up nicely and organized. Um, I I'm really big fan of delegating and outsourcing. I mean, and to be honest, I, what I should have said first is uh, my team. I mean, obviously, I have an amazing team behind me. I'm not yeah. just one guy at all. It's yeah. it's really the team around me. I've got two full time designers around me, and then a good network of freelancers that I use for a regular basis for different things. Yeah. So finding the right people that believe as well and, so, and they support you and your vision, and then um, and then you know just. Um, you know, watching as these things come out and, and having a daily channel, like I have a, you know, my Facebook that I use, I post regularly and seeing on a daily basis, like what people do with that stuff and yeah. how the feedback you get from How's that. How's it morphing? Yeah. That's it. And you know, what they're getting out of it. And when people send stories about, oh, I did this or that, you know, I sent it to my sister and now she started her own thing. I mean, humble, there's been so many of those kind of stories. So that motivates me a lot. Um, and I, you know, even in, like say when I launched all these kids apps, I need it for my kids. Like I'm like I found all the apps out there for kids for Muslim kids too boring or too ritualistic or whatever. So I'm like, well, I want the stem to be really high. Yeah. I want really good quality, fun, exciting, engaging stuff for all of us. Yeah, you know, awesome. and, and, and um, that's it's like an amana. If, if I've got all these creative skills and, and tools in a business. I can't just be going designing sneakers and you know soda drinks and stuff like yeah. that. I want to be making and really spoons. spoons. Yeah. Well, the spoon was cute. <laughs> yeah, the spoons are helpful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a good project. Yeah. Um, but you know what I'm saying? We've got to use. Like, there's a reason why we're here. There's a reason why you've got those talents, whatever they are, and and you know you've got to use them for you know in the best, most like effective, coolest way you can. Yeah. Oh, that's just amazing. And that's I, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with our listeners because I know they're going to really benefit from that. It's just knowing that you know we've got these skills and that when you have them, you need to use them. And you're, you're here for that reason. Uh, that's just the perfect message. And just finally, before we end off, um, any advice? Like people out there have ideas, they've got their projects that they want to start. Yep. They're not sure how to do it. Maybe, you know, they're not sure like what to do with their skills and talents. Yeah. Yep. What? What's the final advice you can give them? Yeah, definitely. Well, I, um, I'm writing a whole series of articles and tips now. Literally this year, I, I made intention to write a whole lot of free content that just give away because I get asked regularly online or through my you know assistants or whatever, like lo- loads of similar questions, like same sort of thing, advice. Um, there's, there's so much of it. I mean, I could talk about you know finding the right people and partnerships. Um, I can talk about you know how you just have great intentions. Um, there's so many amazing re- free resources out there. Like I'm doing a free startups course right now with Y Combinator, and it's, it's just brilliant. Like it's a free course. The prerequisite for teaching the course for each lecture, there's ten guest lectures. Each one has to have founded and um, and, and own a company worth more than one billion dollars, right? To be a lecturer. Yeah. And so the first lecture is the co-founder of Facebook, you know, and so on. So it's like when you're hearing from people. Like like that it's like how can you not feel 
motivated. They're just like regular people that have done this. So I'm like, well, inshallah, I can be one of those people, and anyone listening can be too. Yeah. You know why? Why? You know why wouldn't you? Like if you have, you know, infinite possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, but but uh, I think you know, like it's it's selfish plug, but it's like I I really mean it. Like this year, I'm really writing a lot of stuff that's coming out. So if you do sign up to the newsletter on my page, then you'll actually start getting some of those things. Specifically, how to find your talent, um, how to develop that, and the course that I'm building, Creative Umar, is basically how to. develop and build and grow launch and promote your own idea and oh, turn it into a global uh, a global brand that's basically what mm. I want to be teaching this year so, yeah. check so it out. basically just getting out there using the resources available because there's so many out there and then just really taking that step yeah. and um, get in touch with Peter's work and sign up to his newsletter and yeah. start getting all that we'll put in our short content. um We'll put in our show notes, yeah, show notes as, well. as well yeah no problem no problem mm. yeah, so no. for our listeners to start off where can they get in touch with you uh, probably Facebook is the easiest thing. It's just um, search for Peter Gould um, or the website peter gouldcom um, And yeah, you'll pretty soon you'll eat, you'll probably block me because there's so much stuff coming through every day. Um, but, <laughs> but at least for that first few days, you will be yeah. swarmed with hopefully, <laughs> so hopefully useful things. Yeah, but um, um, yeah, just really, if it really comes down to have a good intention, be in a, always in a state of gratitude mm-hmm. and. Wallahi, like amazing things will happen. Yeah. Great advice. That's great advice. Thanks a lot, Peter, Thank you for so joining much. us. Thank you, guys. Thanks very much. And really great. As you. always, we love talking to you and picking your brain, and we really appreciate you taking time to talk to our listeners. No worries. Okay. 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 All right, and that concludes the interview with Peter Gould. Inshallah, it's gotten you thinking about your talents, perhaps turning an idea that you have into a reality. Do check out Peter's home on the web over at his site, peter-gould.com, plus his Facebook, where he shares some pretty awesome stuff. We'll put all the links to his pages, plus Creative Uma in our show notes, which you can find over at our site, inshallah. Um, plus, you can also find links to previous episodes and interviews that we've done there as well. Finally, I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about our VIP mailing list, free exclusive content, previews, tips, actual interesting discussion where we talk about stuff that matters to you plus you get a say in future guests and topics that we have on our show as well you know what to do muslimlifehackers.com forward slash vip until next time muslim life hackers aim high take action and be awesome